Howdy folks. Hey, so I'm hoping that this video will be really quick because I want to show you something really cool. Uh, and I think I won't take much time, but I do have a habit of rambling. So we'll see where this goes. Now, you know, when it comes to Power Apps, if you are getting into Power Apps or if you've been building Power Apps apps, uh, especially Canvas apps, you know that you have to deal with certain visual elements, right? Uh, building cool stuff is awesome. You know, you may be building like the most sophisticated things, but if, if your app is, as my one of my customers said, ugly as sin, you know, it's, it's not fun to use it, right? Uh, so, and I think a lot of uh, technical folks, uh, whether you are writing C-sharp code or you come from like a Dynamics 365 uh, background or, uh, you know, SharePoint or whatever, I think a lot of these folks, um, they've, they've never had to necessarily deal with colors and visual elements because, you know, like, I mean, especially Dynamics, uh, you have absolutely zero control over how the UI looks or, you know, what you can do with uh, colors, etc. I mean, granted, there's theming and whatnot, but the building blocks, the, the UI for the most part, is, and the UX as well, it's all like set up for you, right? So you're pre predominantly focusing on the behind the scenes automation parts, right? So you're making, you're building a very sophisticated solution that'll make life easy for a lot of people, but you're not really dealing with the UI, the interface elements, right? But now, uh, fast forward to the Power Platform world, Canvas Apps world, where you've been asked to build Power Apps, Canvas Apps. Now you know that you are starting from scratch. You know, you've been given a blank canvas and now you've been asked to not only add functionality, but also make sure that it's at least visually appealing to the eye. You know, um, probably, again, depends on where you're coming from, uh, you you may have access to a dedicated set of UI UX people. And if you do, that's awesome because please use them. Uh, you know, designers are awesome. I have tremendous respect for them. Uh, but you may be working uh, independently or you may be somewhere where you may not have access to the UI UX acumen, right? So what do you do in that case? You can either just use the default interface that Power Apps comes with, which I do not recommend at all because it is as my customer called it, and I and I just laugh about it all the time when I think about it. He, he said it was ugly as sin, right? So you, <laughs> it's just hilarious. Uh, do not use the Power Apps default colors and interface and whatnot. Um, and and in order to avoid that, you may have to sign up for a course or a class, or you may be reading all these like different blogs and websites, etc., which is awesome. But there are times when you, you want to do something really quick, right? And and that's what this video is about. You know, whoa, I rambled, didn't I? Um, so uh, what I want to show you is uh, certain visual elements in your app uh, that you can make very, very substantially uh, uh, important, and you can make them uh, visually appealing as well. So there's a website called, I'm gonna minimize myself here. Uh, it's called Eva Design System. And uh, the website is colors.eva.design. And, and what's really happening here is that the Eva Design System website is generating a set of colors for you that you can use in your app, which which are not like random colors. They, they have a certain theme and uh, they they will, if if gone together, if, if they're used together, they will make your app, uh, they'll add a consistency to your app and they'll, they'll make your app a little, a little better than what you would have otherwise built. Um, so the idea here is that you have your primary color, which is your brand color, right? So think about uh, your customer's logo or your or the branding and whatnot. And what's the what's the primary color that they use? Um, to show you an example here, I'm I'm doing I'm I'm going to use my own blog as an example. Uh, so I run this blog for assistive technology. So I'm going to pretend that I'm building an app for this blog, right? So I want to. Uh, build. I want to pick the main color, which is this this sign color right here. So click it, and I have the color now. By the way, Eyedropper is a very cool Google Chrome extension. If you don't have it yet, I would highly recommend. Uh, but you know, now I have my hex code for my dark sign color here. So now I'm going to go into 
um, the Eva Design website, and I will paste my color here. And now notice that it's by default when you load the website, it has all these different colors. But when I paste mine, um, you see that the colors change, right? So now I have a color scheme or or a, or a color palette that I can use in my own. Uh, app that will be consistent uh, or that will uh, you know enhance my my apps branding and and everything else and and these are semantic colors and what are semantic colors they are colors that add visual meaning to certain actions you know and actions are like success and info warning danger etc right so um and generally speaking, I think a lot of us do associate these colors with uh, these actions. So for example, success is always green for the most part, right? Danger is always red. Warning, we, we know there's a yellow triangle with an exclamation point in it, you know? Uh, and then info is generally speaking blue, et cetera. So, so what this app does is it generates these colors for us, which are consistent with our brandings, our brand's primary color. Primary color. Um, or you'll also notice that it comes with all these like different levels. Uh, 500 is is where it's at. It's, it's at the center. It's the main color right here. So just to keep things simple, you can use all these colors at the 500 level, right? And uh, but it's it's mostly a spectrum. So if you want, you can use these other colors in various capacities in your app as well. Um, now, if you want, you can also, if you don't like what it generates first, you can definitely change it. So if you click this refresh button, it will generate a new scheme for you. Uh, you can keep clicking it until you like what it generates, right? So uh, typically it's going to refresh all these uh, palettes, but if let's say you like your success colors, you can lock it. So now the next time when you generate or, or, or refresh your uh, color palette, it's going to gen refresh only the other unlocked ones. So very simple, uh, very visual, and it, it all it takes is just this one color. And then it provides a whole gamut of colors that you can use uh, in your app. And you know, again, it coming back to the whole point of you're a technical person or you're coming from a, a, a world where you didn't really necessarily play with colors or there was no need for it. But then now you do have to consider these things, right? And I think a lot of us live with the stigma of, oh, okay, you're a technical person. You you may write awesome code, but you do not have the ability to make things pretty. I, I don't agree with that sentiment. I think we all have some some level of uh, artsy capabilities in, in inside of us. All we have to do is we we have to observe what's out there. We have to learn from what's out there and then just, you know, get inspiration from it and, and start using those elements in our own uh, creation as well. You know, so so for those reasons and there are all these tools available out there. You know, so and they're very simple to use. You don't have to be necessarily a designer. Uh, but again, if you have access to designers, please use them. But if you don't, you know, there are all these kinds of tools available that will make your uh, app creation experience a lot uh, better, a lot more easier. Now, uh, coming back to this, once you've identified your colors, once you're happy with this uh, color scheme, if you will, you can export this, right? So you have all these different options. Uh, if you are a Power Apps person, for if you're building a Canvas app for something, um, I would recommend the JSON option because what this does is it's going to um, export all these colors in a JSON file, which is basically a text file. Uh, my JSON opens in, in Firefox, but like you know, so you have all these colors now. Here, let me just open this in Notepad. Um, so now you have now you you have these colors just use them in a collection or on your app start or something like that, right? Where uh, depending on what the situation is, you can use one of these colors. So for example, uh, you know, color warning, this can be, uh, let's call this color warning critical, right? So this can be one of the colors. Now, there may be some warnings which are extremely critical. Right. So again, depending on what what sort of um, actions you have in your app, what what you are trying to visualize, you can use all these colors in different capacities and in, in different screens and and what have you. 
anyway so that was my video uh so eva so colors.eva.design check it out uh, use it in in your apps and see how well it works thanks for watching bye bye